You did use it. Yes, we did. But didn't that put a dagger in his heart? It's hard to put a dagger in his heart. It really is. And the, and the reason is because the mainstream media is so helpful to him. They protect him from those things and they don't re-report. You must have, have noticed that, that that didn't get any real traction in the mainstream. It was, as you say, on YouTube. And we, the people, were punching in with um, deliberacy to say, my goodness, what, look what this guy is saying. That's what's wrong with Washington. But as the mainstream put it out, you didn't even hear it. So that's really a problem in this United States is that we have a mainstream media that is actually in collusion, if you will, with the leftist agenda. Absolutely. I mean, that is a big problem. And uh, fortunately, now we have the Internet and we have a few a little bit more variety. I remember 20 years it was worse. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we have taken a good step into the alternative media arena and that's why I do a little show once a week with Conservative Commandos radio show. I think that all of us need to be thinking about how do we get our message out to a world that may not even be listening but they should be. How do we educate an uninformed electorate so that when they do go to the polling places they have a little bit of information to be able to choose the right candidates. Well I'm glad you were able to use that interview. I, I didn't hear back from your campaign so I assumed that uh, you had never used it but so and this was not uh, strong enough. I thought with that interview he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many things that he did during that that two-year uh, cycle that we ran against him that we thought this surely will be the peace but actually there wasn't a peace and he knew it he knew that that he had enough on his side to pull that win out and that's he was always very confident of that well the way he ran the Senate was so shameful uh, we, it was the lowest, uh, just low down politic, party politic, and it turned the Senate into not a, a debate society or not a discussion, but just uh, rolling the, the opposition based on votes without any discussion of anything. It was just horrible. Well, and, and as you noticed, the whole world noticed, it was an inactive body. Yeah. And in fact, uh, I think they're almost inactive by inertia these days because even though he's not in the majority anymore, he has so uh, given them the idea that they can't act, that they won't act. And uh, I keep waiting for action. Now that you have the majority Republicans, let's act, let's act. And the Congress keeps sending them things to act on. And now we watch them kind of shake over there and, and wonder, are we going to see some action out of you? Or are you just so afraid of the Obama veto, so afraid of the Reed minority that will actually uh, call you names and, and perhaps give you a bad uh, reputation for the next election. What is driving the Senate? And many Americans are wondering, what is driving you, or is there anything? Absolutely. And didn't they, didn't Harry Reid use the atomic option on the Republicans? Can't they use the atomic option on the Democrats? <laughs> you would think if the nuclear, <laughs> if there is a nuclear option, it would work both ways, but oh, yeah, it was certainly, the option. <laughs> certainly we haven't seen that yet. Uh, we've heard some promises. I've heard some promises here at CPAC from those senators that are um, presidential hopefuls saying we're going to do something about Obamacare. Well, I said, when? When? Let's, let's see it now. We'd and, like and, to know when and, we're going to act. And the budget. They just uh, rubber stamp increases in the budget and don't do anything about it. Well, and I, I think that the American people are, are really wanting some action on the part of the Senate.